So welcome back. So we left off on global labeling. So global labeling is also referred to as mislabeling. So a person generalizes one or two qualities into a negative global judgment about themselves or another person. This is an extreme form of overgeneralization. So instead of describing an error in context of a specific situation, a person will attach a healthy universal label to themselves or others. For example, so they may say I'm a loser in a situation where they failed a specific task. So when someone else's behavior rubs a person the wrong way without bothering or, or understanding, uh, bothering to understand any context around why the person's rubbing them the wrong way, they may attach an unhealthy label to him, such as he's a real jerk. So mislabeling involves describing an event with language that is highly colored and emotionally loaded. So, for example, instead of saying someone drops her children off at day care every day, a person who is mislabeling might say that she abandons her children to strangers. So, always uh, number fourteen is always being right. So, when a person engages in this in this distortion, they are continually putting other people on trial to prove their that their own opinions and actions are the absolute correct ones. So to a person engaging in always being right, being wrong is unthinkable. They will go to any lengths to demonstrate their rightness. So this is a person where, like, when you're interacting with them, you always feel like it's a debate. Every conversation is a debate. Or you feel like you're, you're talking to a lawyer at a cross-examination. So it's, like, always this, like, just always being on your guard and always being on that you're going to be debating with them. So, for example, so this person is thinking, I don't care how badly arguing with me makes you feel. I'm going to win this argument no matter what because I am right. Being right often is more important than the feelings of others around a person who engages in this cog cognitive distortion, even loved ones. So the final cognitive distortion is the false belief is a heaven's reward fallacy. So this, uh, the final cognitive distortion is the false belief that a person's sacrifice and self-denial will eventually pay off, as if some global force is keeping score. So this is kind of like uh, where if you work hard, everything will work with, out for you. Or if you just work hard enough in school, or if you just work hard enough at work, you'll get that promotion, or you'll get that good grade. So this is a riff on the fallacy of fairness. So it's very similar in that way. Because in a fair world, the people who work the hardest will get the largest reward. When it's not always the case. Sometimes like, it just depends on the situation. Sometimes no matter how hard you work at work, sometimes you don't get a promotion. A person who sacrifices works hard but doesn't experience the expected payoff will usually feel bitter when the reward doesn't come. It's kind of also like the American dream thinking where... If I just work hard enough, I'll get rich. Or if I just work hard enough, I'll get that nice car or that nice house. So that's the heaven reward fallacy. So we'll talk about some cognitive dis, uh, common cognitive distortion and stress. I know I mentioned it on the other slides, but just as a refresher, if you want to go back and look at it. So these are kind of the cognitive distortion thinking that comes to our mind when people are stressed. Now, the other ones might play out if you're more likely to think of that way, but these are the three common ones. So the first one is the shooting statement. So those are towards self and present tense. So that's on uh, the slide 10, if you want to look at that again. The personalizations is number six, the personalization slide. So if you want to look at that again to refresh your mind and see if your thinking falls under this, if you're stressed. Feel free to look at it. There's also fortune telling and mind reading, which is on number uh, four slide, the jumping to conclusions one. So these are the most common ones of cognitive distortion when people are under stress or thinking. And okay, we got our time uh, countdown. So I'll stop there and I'll go into the assignment more. And th uh, this slide will also make more sense when I talk about the activity. So just stay tuned.